Hey guys, Blake Johnson, Finishing Touches here out of Fort Worth, Texas. Um, basically just want to take a few minutes today and kind of go over the top five mistakes that we here commonly see investors make. Um, one of the first ones I want, I want to go over briefly with you are start dates and timelines. And what I mean by that is you have to understand that just because you've closed on the property, if you haven't done enough upfront legwork to ensure that everybody's on the same page and everybody's ready to go, then you're probably not going to be able to start as soon as you close. And what I mean is time and time again, I get clients that will receive an estimate from us, say it's three weeks ago, but I haven't heard a word from them. And then the day of closing, they send an email and it says, we're closed, funded, ready to start the project. But I haven't even heard from them. So now we've got to try to get them into a system that's already cycling and churning. It takes a long time to do that. It takes sometimes as much as two to three weeks to get through the entire process. So take the time up front, do all your homework, get all the legwork done, and make your decision. Once you know, guys, let's be honest, you're going to know within the first 35 to 45 minutes of an interview with a contractor whether you like them and whether it's going to work. If it's not going to work or you don't get a good vibe from them, cut the other one loose. The days of having three bids and entertaining three contractors and doing this are coming to an end because it's getting more and more difficult to even get contractors because the, the, the real estate market is booming. As soon as you know that you don't like one of the contractors that you're interviewing with, just get rid of them. And if, they, if that gets down to one and you like that one, then let him know. Hey, I like the direction we're going. We're going to go ahead and move forward. I close in seven to 10 days. What do I need to do to get on your schedule? The, game, the days of holding the cards close to your chest and then waiting to the last minute are pretty much behind us. Second one I'd like to discuss is plans. Once you have a scope of work and you and your contractor have decided on the scope of work and you've signed off on it, you're done. You're not going to go back and change it and keep modifying it. And because you have another great idea because you just watched the Flipper Flop Fort Worth show and now you have a great idea and you want to inject that into your system. No, once we've made a decision, we're going to stick to it because you have to redo all the scope of work again and redefine it. I've got a client right now that she literally stopped the wheels in motion because she wanted to change some things within the house once we started. It's taken us almost two and a half weeks to get back on track. So when and if that does happen and you do decide to stop, you need to, once you make your decisions, you need to reset expectations within yourself. It's going to take you two to three weeks to get, to get the wheels up and running again. Just because you stop one day doesn't mean you can start the next day. So it does take time, so try to be as thorough as you can. Probably one of the biggest ones I've seen here lately, honestly, is you guys are afraid to walk away from earnest money. I realize you're an investor and the rule number one in business is never lose money. But I've seen so many clients literally put $5,000 non-refundable down and I've, I've walked away from the house telling them I can't help them. I'm not going to be able to rehab this property. It is too bad a shape. Your budget's too low and they still go forward. I don't understand it. Look, it's a learning. It's, I've, you're going to spend the money either way you go. Let's take that as a learning lesson and take that $5,000 and just say we're chalking that up as a loss, unfortunately, and move on. If the deal doesn't fit, don't try to do a round peg in a square hole. It blows my mind when I go to these houses and I meet with these investors and I literally tell them as a contractor with 18 years of experience that we do 230 plus homes a year, you do the math on how many houses that is and they're still going to listen to me tell them I can't help you and they're still going to do it. I get no financial gain out of telling you no. I lose. But yet if I'm still telling you no and you're still going to do it, you're on your own. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Don't be afraid to walk away from that money. Emotionally attached is another problem I see happen time and time again. They've just liquidated their 401k. They've done all these different things to get enough money together, to pool the money together, to start buying and selling houses. You have to remove the emotion. This is strictly a vehicle to your financial future. It's not your home. It's your investment. So you have to be able to remove that. We're not doing fixer-upper in these houses. We're doing what sells in the marketplace and what sells with the comps that we have to work with. Lastly, is having cash reserves. Guys, in the Dallas-Fort Worth marketplace right now, there's not a lot of inventory. So what's happening is we're having to rehab older homes, and those older homes generate more problems that are older. We're uncovering more things that we didn't find on the surface that are below the surface. Sometimes I see these clients come up and they literally have liquidated everything. They don't have, they have the exact amount of money to do the rehab, but they don't have anything set aside for extras. 
guys, don't do the house. If you don't have the money set aside for incidentals, or let's say, for example, we, we have to do the foundation, and we raise the foundation, we check the plumbing and the plumbing breaks, and we have to spend $2,000 to repair the plumbing, that's a legitimate concern that we cross every day as working with investors. Those are some of the top tips. I hope that helps. If you guys have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us.